The film opens by showing three rock climbers who are pumping their adrenaline by doing rock climbing activities. They are Shiloh Hunter, Becky, and her husband Den Corner. Reaching the top of the cliff is their goal of doing the activity. As he was about to tie the rope, a bird came out of the hole and surprised Den. He fell down with the rope still holding him up. I'm coming down. Den was unable to reach the cliff wall, plus the rope wasn't strong enough to hold his weight as he continued to move. Hunter immediately came down to help, while Becky loosened the rope, so Den could reach the cliff wall. The effort was quite effective and Den almost hit the cliff wall. But suddenly, the hook of the rope came off so that Den fell and died at the bottom of the cliff. Long story short, a year has passed. Becky has not been able to forget the bad events that happened to her husband. Becky's father kept trying to give advice. But that wasn't enough to convince Becky to start over again. Becky became a closed person, even from her best friend Hunter. After they had not seen each other for a long time. That night, Hunter came to see Becky. Becky looks happy when she meets Hunter. Hunter is very concerned about Becky's current situation. Hunter's arrival there is to help Becky rise from her sadness. Hunter offers Becky to come with her to climb TV Tower B67. With a height of 2,000 feet, and the tower is about 6 hours away. Hunter says this is the only way to deal with the trauma. And at the top of the tower later, Becky can throw Den's ashes as a tribute. Becky can also scream as loud as she can to express the sadness she feels. After much deliberation, Becky finally agreed and they started their journey. The next day, they were not far from the destination tower. Hunters record their activities for the benefit of YouTube content. The tower looks very high, its location is surrounded by a locked fence with a warning of danger. They don't care about danger, because they came there to challenge danger. They continued their journey on foot through the hot sun until they arrived at the under of the tower. In the past, this tower was the highest peak in their country, but now this tower is no longer used, so it is left abandoned. After preparing the equipment, they began to climb the stairs one by one. From a distance, the tower's rusty retaining chain can be seen moving to withstand the tower's shock. In the middle of the climb, Becky was surprised when one of the stairs fell off. The tower looks very old and neglected, the iron has been corroded by rust. Unbeknownst to them, some of the ladder bolts were no longer locked. Some have even been lost. They had climbed the first 1,800 feet, now there were only 200 feet of unprotected vertical stairs they had to climb to get to the top of the tower. Hunter looked very calm, even had time to joke by shaking the stairs. A bolt fell off, but they didn't know it. Becky made it through the last steps with the help of Hunter. The footing caused the other bolts to come off, so that the ladder currently only sticks and is no longer locked. Now they have made it to the top of the tower. They enjoy the wind blowing at a height. And they get their own satisfaction for the achievement. Not satisfied with the crazy thing, Hunter again challenged her adrenaline by hanging, without safety and with only one hand. After that, Hunter persuaded Becky to try the same thing but in a more extreme way. Becky puts Hunter's trust in her for the rest of her life. Although very scared, Becky managed to cross her line of fear and they screamed with joy. Now that Becky looked better, she let go of all her sadness and fear at the top of the tower. Then Becky threw Den's ashes as a sign that she was ready to start a new life. The mission had been successful, and they were preparing to descend. Becky started going down the stairs one by one, suddenly one part of the stairs shifted, and the vibrations affected the other stairs that were connected to each other. The ladder slipped away with Becky holding on tight. The steps were unable to support Becky's weight, until in the end, all the stairs at a height of 2,000 feet vertically collapsed. Becky fell with the rope connected to Hunter's body. Hunters are very strong. With all her might, she pulled her best friend back to the stairs of the tower. Becky was very happy to have survived from death, without realizing, that now there were no more stairs for them to go down. When they looked down, they realized that they had been stuck at 2,000 feet with no way to descend and no drinking water, because their bags got caught in the transmitter. They started to panic. Plus, the cell phone signal doesn't reach that high area. Inside the tower box, they find binoculars and a flare gun which they might use to call for help. Hunter has the idea to ask for help by making a status on social media, then lowering the cell phone in the hope, that the cell phone reaches the signal and the status is successfully posted. Hunter go down to get the lowest point possible. She almost fell, but her efforts were fruitless. 
the signal remains unreachable at that altitude. Then they tried another effort by putting the cell phone in the shoe as a safety, then dropping it. At that time, Becky's attention was focused on the 143 tattoo on Hunter's foot. That number means a code or expression of love. But Becky didn't think much of it. Moments later, they saw a man pass under the tower. They shouted at the top of their voices, but their voices were not heard from below. On the other hand, the cell phones they threw turned out to be destroyed. Then, they tried to throw the man with a shoe, it almost worked. The man finds the shoes, but then leaves without realizing they are on top of the tower. The man headed for an old car. They plan to shoot gun flares when it gets dark. Becky watched the video on her cell phone and realized that Hunter's face looked sad on her wedding day. Becky began to suspect if there was something her best friend was hiding. In the dark, Becky fires a flare gun. Her efforts were successful. The two men saw where they were. They have high hopes to be saved. The man headed towards the tower gate. Unexpectedly, they came not to help, but to steal Hunter's car. That night, Becky asks Hunter's tattoo relationship with her husband. Hunter admits that they are in love with the same man. But the relationship was established before Becky married Den. After Becky married, Hunter ended the relationship by sacrificing her feelings and hiding the secret in order to protect Becky's feelings. Becky accepted the fact, so she took off her wedding ring. Now, more than 24 hours they survive from the hot sun without water. That afternoon, Hunter took the initiative to go down to get the bag. A little more for Hunter to reach the bag, Hunter released the rope safety, then swinging her body jumped into the transmitter. The bag was successfully retrieved, but a new problem arose. She couldn't reach the strap, so she decided to tie the bag to the phone holder and attach it to the strap. While she herself will jump to reach the rope to return. Hunter's experiment was successful, Becky immediately pulled her up. Hunter tried to grab the ladder, but the grip wasn't strong enough and she fell. Becky was in shock. She slowly peeked down, apparently Hunter managed to grab the bag but her hand was injured, so Hunter could no longer climb and Becky had to keep pulling her up to the top of the tower. Becky's attempt was successful. She was very happy and Hunter promised not to leave her. They try to send messages using drones. But the drone's battery isn't enough to fly too far. Later that night, Becky opens her eyes and finds Hunter dead with a meat-eating bird next to her. Becky was shocked and then woke up from her nightmare with Hunter still beside her. In the afternoon, Hunter advised Becky to charge the drone by utilizing the solar power plant at the top of the tower. At first, Becky looked very scared. But Hunter cheered her up by singing. The song managed to burn Becky's spirit until she made it to the top of the tower. Hunter told her to run the current using metal. Becky tried to wear a wedding ring and it worked. Drone battery starts to charge. While charging the battery, Becky survives on top of the tower from the hot sun and attacks by meat-eating birds. A few moments later the battery is fully charged. Becky got down and tried sending the message again. Becky flies the drone to a nearby motel. The drone almost reached the motel but a truck hit it. The truck briefly stopped, but then left without seeing the message inside. That evening, a storm seemed to be coming down. Becky is getting weaker and Hunter suggests that she catch birds or anything that passes by to recharge. Becky didn't give up, she would try sending a message again by throwing her cell phone on the ground. She asked Hunter to give her shoes to protect her cell phone, but Hunter said that was impossible. Because Hunter was actually downstairs, stuck in the transmitter. In fact, Hunter had died. At that time she actually did not manage to reach the bag. Hunter fell, injured, and bleeding. Becky was crying. She was too afraid to be alone. Becky couldn't accept the fact that her best friend had died. In her sadness, Becky remembered her father who was always worried about her. She recorded a video of her regrets and apologies. The next morning, Becky purposely lures a bird to bite the wound, Becky then catches and eats the bird to replenish her energy. After that, Becky, who had been energized, ventured down to the transmitter and approached Hunter's body. Becky wrote a message to her father. Then, took Hunter's shoes and with sadness, Becky slipped the cell phone into Hunter's wound and dropped it. It turned out that the plan worked, the cell phone was well protected, and the message was sent to her father who immediately asked for help, then her father followed Becky to the location. Arriving at the location, security officers successfully completed the mission by helicopter. Becky's father was very sad when he saw officers evacuating Hunter's body which he thought was the body of his daughter, Becky. From the ambulance Becky called her father, Becky came to her father while apologizing for all her mistakes so far. And the meeting of father and daughter at the same time ends the story of this movie.